when uh, we are doing PCB layout, very often we route our tracks with 50 ohm impedance. And uh, could you use like different impedance or where this 50 ohms is coming from? I asked Eric Bogatin and here is his answer. Uh, do we have to have 50 ohm? And the answer is the important thing that the signal cares about is the same instantaneous impedance. And so we can use um, um, 20, you know, in fact, uh, gosh, maybe 15 years ago, RAM bus uh, came out with a new kind of memory bus, RDRAM. Uh, they worked with Intel quite a bit and they decided to use uh, 28 ohms as the impedance of the environment. So the drivers, the impedance of the transmission lines, the receivers, the termination strategies, all optimized for 28 ohms. Um, in the early days, even before that, in the 30 years ago, um, IBM and Cray, they developed high-speed computer systems and they used 66 ohms as the target impedance. And as long as everything was consistent, perfectly fine. Now, the, question, the second part of your question is, why 50 ohms? And if you are designing your system from scratch, and you can make any impedance you want. The target impedance you select is a trade-off of a lot of factors. One of them is gonna be what your device technology is capable of. You know, there's a limit to how low you can go or, um, in, in some cases. Second is power consumption. Because generally the termination strategy you use, generally you're going to have some kind of resistive element in there that's gonna dissipate power. And the lower the impedance, the larger the current that's going to flow, the I squared R power consumption, the larger the power consumption. So higher impedance is better for uh, lower power consumption. But to engineer a high impedance line, you know you have to use either a thick dielectric or a really narrow line, and there's a limit to what you can manufacture. And if you have narrow lines or thick lines, then the second concern is, the closer you get the two adjacent signals, the more crosstalk. And so you get more sensitivity to crosstalk with higher impedance that says lower impedance is better used. And so when you make that list of all the performance trade-offs based on the impedance that you select for your environment, 50 ohms is a pretty good compromise. And I always say, unless you have a strong, compelling reason otherwise, unless you've done your detailed analysis and you have decided power consumption is more important than anything, I'm gonna use high impedance, or noise is more important than anything, I'm gonna use the lower impedance. Unless you've done that careful trade-off between them, 50 ohms is not a bad compromise. All the fab vendors know how to make 50 ohm transmission lines. You can get test equipment that interfaces to 50 ohms really easily. And and that's you know probably why we use um, 100 ohms for differential impedance because it's easy to combine two uh, loosely coupled 50 ohm lines to uh, 100 ohms. So it's it's really one of those cases of unless you have a strong reason otherwise, 50 ohms is that good balance. Um, and and you can ask, well, wait a minute, where do we ever come up with 50 ohms? That's another question. 